Welcome to Chopstick Travel. We're Luke and Sabrina, and today is day three here in the north of Pakistan. We're in Gilgit, Baltistan, and today we've come to the beautiful Adabad Lake, which has a sad story. We'll tell you about it later. It's an incredible region of northern Pakistan that you can explore. So we're going to be tasting some local cuisine today, but first we're going to be jumping on one of these boats and checking out what Adabad Lake has to offer. So we're on the beautiful Audubon Lake now, just took out the boat and there are these gorgeous mountains surrounding us and the water is this brilliant blue color and there's really actually a sad story behind this lake. So it formed because of an earthquake that occurred. 20 people actually died because of this earthquake and the lake started filling up over a period of eight months and below this lake there's an entire village that has been completely covered in the lake. So it is a sad story. Now they're developing around this area and it's becoming a tourism hotspot. Sad, but certainly beautiful now. That happened back in 2010, so it's actually very recent. I can't believe just how blue the water is and it's very calm. It's a windy day, the lake's nice and calm and of course the mountains, absolutely gorgeous. village right now because you can see some old trees where they, the village actually used to be pretty insane. Finished off on the boat, that was awesome. And we had pretty well the entire lake, which is massive, to ourselves. And this is untouched beauty here. And I don't think it's gonna stay that way for long. So definitely visit Pakistan and do it with Minaki. So we've come to get some lunch at a little restaurant called the Yak Grill. And as soon as you arrive here, you're just gonna be blown away by the massive mountains behind it. So the mountains behind it are called the Pasu Cones. They're famous for their really unique uh, cone-like shape. And as you can imagine, this place is specializing in yak. And I think we're gonna get some burgers, yak burgers. So it's a really small little place, but just check out those views. Incredible, let's go in. <laughs> Yeah, you can go 
So we've ordered up two different dishes. We ordered, of course, their burger, which is a minced yak meat. He puts cheese on top of it and then served on a toasted bun. And then we also ordered his yak chili dry, which is like a Chinese style dish where he uh, sliced some really thin cuts of yak meat, fried it up with a bunch of different vegetables, super big flame and then that's served with a fried rice as well so just sitting outside have incredible views waiting for the food so this is the chili dry which is usually beef but here of course at the yak grill they're making it with yak there's corn mushrooms green chilies uh, bell peppers carrots and then it's served with fried rice egg fried rice and then this is the beauty of a burger check that out Oh man, my mouth is watering. There's onions I see, uh, some sauce, that cheese is melted, and that's quite a thick, thick cut burger. Let's try it out, yak burger with incredible views. Oh man, yum. Look how juicy that is. Mmm. It's a thick, thick burger. Super juicy on the inside. You definitely get a little bit of a hint of some yak which i don't really know how to explain and then you get nice fresh crunch from the onions in there and then nice cheese wow that's good and the sauce is like a tangy mayo mm. that burger did not last long at all and i've moved on to the yak chili dry get some of that yak meat some fried rice mm. that's actually really good it's covered in oyster sauce, so it's got a little bit of a sweetness. And then there's definitely some heat in there. It is spicy. Nice with the fried rice, too. Mm. Mm. There are a lot of little hidden gems around the Adabad Lake area, and one of them is located up on top of this hill. And it's a little cafe called Glacier Breeze, and they are famous for selling an apricot cake that we have heard is really delicious. So we're gonna go get one right now. So this is a super homey little cafe on top of a hill, and they are super famous, as I mentioned, for their apricot cake. And we just ordered one. We, I thought we were getting a slice, but they brought out an entire cake, and it smells incredible. So check it out right here. It's like a really soft looking. Uh, cake with tons of apricots. Oh man, it's packed full of apricots. So, oh, that feels so moist. Let's try it out. Mm. Oh, that is no joke. Super soft cake, creamy uh, apricots, and a little bit sour. And there must be like maybe some cinnamon or some spice in there. It tastes really fresh and good. Like it tastes like definitely they just baked it this morning for sure. And I love those apricots, they're really creamy. Yum. Mm. Mm. Such a quaint little cafe and really tasty apricot cake really friendly owner too. Um, definitely check it out if you're in the Adabad Lake area. They have lots of other foods as well. And there's so much to see here. We're gonna go check out a, a suspension bridge, which I've heard is somewhat exhilarating. So let's go see it. So this is the Husseini Suspension Bridge. It's a bridge that's just got a couple, maybe a foot or a foot and a half gap between every single step. And apparently they're gonna clip you on so it's gonna be completely safe. Slight change of plans. The guy who straps you in is not here. So we're just gonna go without it. Oh wow. The gaps are pretty big actually. So it's definitely scary. The gaps are not equal, so some of them are way bigger than others. And the 
boards are all kind of uh, mix match sizes and you go over patches of water and patches of rock. It's not very high, but uh, yeah, you definitely don't want to fall. Oh man, going over the water is even scarier, I think. That was pretty exhilarating. Actually not too, too scary, but uh, mainly just the condition of the bridge is what is scary. <laughs> So that was the Husseini suspension bridge. Really cool, and once again, there was nobody there. We had the entire place to ourselves. So now we're going to head to a restaurant for dinner that's serving trout, which is really famous, and it comes just from these rivers here. trout fish farm and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a net we're gonna fish out a fish and uh, then we're gonna cook it in the local style so let's give it a try yes, yeah. oh. <laughs> I <got> one. <laughs> the small one put him back well that's just doing it <laughs> Yeah, 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 this one is good. Yeah, this is good. We won. Okay, we'll try again. <laughs> You wash them again? Yeah. Same size. Yeah, same size. So we've got two pretty good sized trout. They came right out of the fish farm, but you can also see beside the fish farm, there's a stream, like a natural stream, and there's tons of trout living there. So they are indigenous to this area. We're gonna take them back to the restaurant now and cook them up. We got them here. Catch. Nice. You got one. Did I get one? I think so. You got the... Ah.
Nice. So we're back at the restaurant now. They first clean the fish with some fresh mountain water right on the side of the road. And then they brought them back into the kitchen and uh, butterfly cut them. And we're going to be cooking two different dishes. The first is karahi, fish karahi, and then we're gonna have fish fry. So they first just uh, boiled the fish. So they need some fresh vegetables for the food we're cooking and just like everywhere we've seen here in the north, it's gonna be organic. So we're heading to the garden to, I guess, pick some fresh veggies. It's all over organic. super cool that just about five minutes ago this fish was swimming yeah. in the farm and yeah. we caught it with the net and now it's almost finished being made into different local dishes. Doesn't get any more fresh than this. So for the karahi, he started with a base of ginger garlic paste and then he added those organic tomatoes to it and then just a little bit of water and then they cooked that down, reduced it until it's a thick gravy. And then he started adding in all of the spices, starting with some salt, quite a lot of black pepper, coriander seeds, a karahi masala and a fish masala. And then he added the fish, which was shredded. The bones were removed and he even sliced thinly the fish skin to add into that karahi. And then for the fish fries, very simple. He doesn't even bread the fish. It's just a little bit of salt dropped in the oil. I think it's gonna be really good. Just waiting for it to arrive now. So something that we didn't know that we were going to have today is this. This is the fish soup. So they've made it up with kind of the extra bones that they had from the trout. And uh, it's also served in a mug, which is kind of cool. So let's give it a try. Mm. Mm. That's lovely. Wow, that's really good. With a little bit of mint in there, that's great. All right, so it's time for the fish karahi. And wow, check out everything on top. Some mint, ginger, green chili and let's just go right in get a big scoop of everything even the green chili <laughs> wow this looks amazing all right let's go in for a bite wow that's insane the fish is almost not even there it just disintegrates in your mouth and there's so much tartness from that tomato and the main spice is coming from all that black pepper. It's more of like a black peppery spice. And what I really want to try is to get a bite of this fish skin. If you can see right here, it's all fish skin. So I want to try that out. Mm. It's not even there. Fish karahi was incredible and inside here we have the incredibly delicious looking fish fry. So he only put a little bit of salt on it at the first, but obviously at the end, he has completely coated it in masala. So super crispy looking. Oh man, that looks incredible. Rip a piece off. Oh, and it just completely detaches from the skin. Super easy. And I've also got, uh, looks like a lime. Go for a little squeeze of lime. Let's try this. Yum. It's still moist on the inside and super crispy on the outside. Go with the lime too. Mm. That's great. You got Fried a perfectly. Too. Oh, yeah, I know. You want a little piece of fish? Mm. 
<laughs> Might be a little spicy for her. So not only is the food absolutely delicious, but look at the views behind me. There's, we're just like surrounded by snow-capped mountains and we are just waiting now. They're going to bring us a, what they call a local coffee, but it has, it's more like a tea. So this local coffee, they call it, but there's no coffee in it whatsoever. There's six different ingredients, um, sea buckthorn, almond oil, and four other ingredients that uh, we don't know the English names to, but you can see obviously there's milk in it as well. And there's some kind of floaty stuff on the top. It smells really nice. It almost smells like chocolatey. It's reminding me of the smell of hot chocolate in Oaxaca. Let's try it out. Whoa, that's really good. It's really creamy and yeah, it, it tastes chocolatey. Nutty, a little nutty and a little chocolatey. It's sweet for sure. It's not like a herbal tea like I was kind of expecting. So we've just come to a place called Korga and this is a traditional carpet weaving factory, I guess you could say, but it's more local and traditional. And we actually met these ladies last night at the wedding and they kindly invited us over to check out the carpet weaving. And of course we've had some chai uh, before we watched them work. And this building that we're in is really cool actually. It's uh, over 400 years old, she told me, and it, it has the traditional style and I'm really excited to see how they make the carpets. Wow. So this is a very interesting process. So they first start by creating the design, which is all drawn by hand. And then they start by taking the sheep's wool yarn and individually one by one tying a knot and pushing it down and she's got this like multi-tool which picks the I guess the base opens it up she ties it around and then she pushes it down and it also cuts so this tool basically does everything and she's super fast with the handwork it's really quite interesting and a lot of work goes into this so this one behind me here is more of a rug than a carpet and it took about three months but then something like this one right here is a carpet and this took how many months this one four, four month? months four one months lady. four months one lady and they are absolutely beautiful they have all different colors all using natural dyes from uh, different things like pomegranate and indigo and walnut and yeah it's so gorgeous i love it So we've actually just picked out um, this beautiful, beautiful rug and love the colors. It's just gorgeous and it took one and a half months to make. Actually she made it and yeah. We have no home to put it in, but oh well, someday we will. All right guys, that's it for today's episode. Another incredible day of exploring here in Gilgit, Baltistan with our friends at Manaki. If you guys want to have similar amazing experiences here in Pakistan, definitely check out manaki.com. All of their information is down in the description box. And what do you guys think was the best thing that we ate today? I think it was the fish karahi. For sure, fish the fish karahi. karahi. That was amazing. Yeah, it doesn't really get fresher than that. We literally pulled it right out of the water and then walked right up the path and within five minutes it was done. Yep. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe if you hadn't already. Hit the bell icon so you're notified and we'll see you in the next episode of Chopstick Travel. Bye. Bye.